Hello and welcome to Gemo Live and to this, this week's session on laser drilled diamonds. I'm your host, Julia Griffith from Jewelry Advisor. And if we go straight in to the learning outcomes for today, it's all about laser drilling treatments. Starting off, we're going to focus on laser drilling, which, which is known as laser drilling, and talk about how these, um, this treatment is applied to diamonds and how we can identify this treatment, as well as any disclosure and grading for diamonds as well. We'll then be looking at KM laser drilling, which is a newer type of laser drilling treatment. And again, we will talk about how these stones are treated and the identification and grading and any disclosure required as well. So to start off, we'll just define what gemstone treatments are. So a treatment is the process of artificially altering a gemstone beyond typical cutting and polishing techniques. So for diamonds, treatments that are available either involve color, so we can completely change the color of a diamond or even in very specific circumstances, remove color from diamond. And we can also treat them for clarity. And this is what laser drilling is. It's a clarity treatment aimed at making the diamond look a better clarity than it would have been without the treatment. So there are three different treatments on the market which all require disclosure for diamonds. Two of them we're covering today, so that's laser drilling and KM laser drilling. There's also fracture filling as well, which involves filling any surface reaching fractures in diamonds with a very high content or high lead content glass. But we're going to focus on the drilling techniques that we have for diamonds, starting with just laser drilling, sometimes known as traditional laser drilling, because this is the one that came out first. And this first came onto the commercial diamond market in 1970. This is 10 years after lasers were first invented. And throughout the decade of the 1960s, lots of different experiments were underway to try and use diamonds, I uh, beg your pardon, try and use lasers to treat diamonds, specifically to remove their dark inclusions. The reason that everyone seemed to have this idea was because diamonds are sometimes deep boiled in acid. This is part of their cleaning procedure after they're cut and any surface reaching cavities that contained dark inclusions would uh, be cleaned out by this deep boiling process. So with the lasers, they thought, oh, if we burn into the stone, we can access those deeper um, contained black inclusions within the stone and make them look lighter. So experiments started around 1962 with General Electric, and they were successfully laser drilling and uh, lightening inclusions in industrial quality diamonds. And this came onto the trade um, more people were experimenting with different types of lasers. Uh, the Perlman brothers from New York are often credited the first ones to do it in commercial diamonds. And this was a clarity treatment specifically for diamonds, uh, where diamonds are, or well, they have such a good thermal conductivity, the highest out of all materials, they can take the heat of a laser and they can be burnt by a laser and dissipate the rest of the heat without damaging the rest of the stone. So other stones couldn't be laser drilled because they're more likely to be damaged. So the aim of laser drilling is for dark mineral inclusions and the target or the aim of the treatment is to lighten this inclusion. So we drill down to the dark crystal, boil it in acid, which then dissolves any mineral inclusion inside leaving a less noticeable inclusion at the end. So the stones are more appealing visually. So this improves the apparent clarity and ultimately this treatment makes the diamond more saleable. In regards to prices, they are priced cheaper than an untreated counterpart. So prices can be about 25 to 35% less than a stone of similar appearance that hasn't been treated. 
For particularly low clarity stones that may have multiple laser treatments, it can be as much as 50% lower than an untreated counterpart. So let's look into the method a step by step on what happens when laser drilling is performed on a diamond. So here we have a diamond that has a dark mineral inclusion encapsulated inside the stone and we're going to use an infrared laser to get to it. So often these are pulsed lasers, although they can be continuous wave lasers. Uh, infrared, so they have a wavelength of 1064 and they're targeted and focused right above the inclusion and we're going to burn through the diamond until we reach it. Now, to burn into a diamond, actually this wavelength doesn't damage the diamond at all. So we need something to kickstart the process. And so right on top of the surface, they put a dot of dark ink or maybe amorphous carbon so that the heat can build up in that area and start kick off that burning process. That turns the surface of the diamond into CO2 and so really it's laser ablation taking off layer after layer and burning a channel into the diamond all the way to the inclusion. And then it would look like this with this pathway from the outside in to the inclusion. So this is what the pathway can look like in real life. These are known as laser drill holes. And this is the channel that has been burnt from the crown of the diamond in this instance, all the way through until it reaches the inclusion. They often can look whitish like this or transparent. It depends on what type of light you're um, uh, illuminating the diamond with, but dark field is often the best to see this feature. Now this channel that runs through is really thin. It's typically just 0.02 millimeters in diameter. Now this is much thinner than the average human hair. So average human hair is 0.06 to 0.08 millimeters. So this is a really fine channel. And actually we can have a range of widths for this laser drill channel. It can be as small as 0.015 millimeters also known as 15 microns. Uh, this is with one of the continuous wave lasers, which apparently makes a nice smoother channel to the diamond through the diamond as well, or it can be up to 60 microns. So um, just the lower end of the average human hair there for thickness, so still very thin. Uh, these typically taper as they go down into the stone as well. So if we have a look at this, uh, channel going through the stone, you can see that it is tapering slightly smaller as we reach the inclusion there, and it tapers with that depth. Uh, there is the other type of laser, which is the pulsed laser, which I mentioned. This leaves a more granular and typically on the larger side of these drill channels, if it's one of the pulsed layers, lasers. And that just means that um, lots of energy is um, pulsed in quick succession at the stone, which will slowly burn it through. Now, once we've reached the inclusion, the next stage is to get rid of that dark mineral. Uh, the mineral itself could be a number of things. Uh, dark minerals and in inclusions, they're often called carbon spots, but actually there are about 25, 26 different dark minerals that can occur in diamonds. So there's sulfides and also iron inclusions. So for example, magnetite, which is an iron inclusion or pyrite, which is an iron sulfide, could be graphite as well. So lots of different choices that it could be. And these minerals can be vaporized from the laser itself. If not, uh, then also it will then be deep boiled and this will remove all of the remnants that uh, are left in that void within the stone. So all of the dark inclusion is dissolved away by different acids and this could be nitric acid or, or sulfuric acid and also one other hydrochloric acid or a mixture of these to get the diamond um, sorry, to clean the inclusion out of the diamond. 
Now, diamonds themselves are completely inert to all of these acids. They're put into a container, a sealed container, and then heated up within this acid. So there's also pressure within the container to help any of that acid enter into the diamond, clearing out any other minerals or impurities within the stone, but leaving the diamond completely untouched otherwise. So the result of this is a much less noticeable inclusion. We've taken a dark inclusion and made it light or removed it completely, making it transparent. So we've made something that was high relief and in high contrast to the diamond, so a dark inclusion, and made it low relief and much less noticeable. And the result of this is a diamond that is more visually appealing to the commercial diamond market. So let's have a look at a few before and afters. Here is a picture of a diamond before it has been laser drilled. And this diamond, heavily included, but it's included with a very large inclusion right there in the center with a red ring around it in case you can't spot it. So there it is before treatment and here it is after. So as you can see, this has been quite a dramatic difference for the before and after considering that dark inclusion had such a presence, it really drew the eye to it in its position and with its contrast against the light background. And the stone looks much better after. Here's another example. So again, a dark mineral inclusion, again, central under the table, and here it is after. You'll notice that the inclusion itself, an inclusion still exists, it's just we've changed the type of inclusion. So it was a mineral, an opaque dark mineral, but now it's the same size and in the same position, but it's now a void, a colourless area within the stone. And one more, here's our before, you've got your dark mineral inclusion there. For this particular stone, that inclusion must be positioned a bit deeper within the diamond because we do seem to have an awful lot of reflection of the inclusion in this stone as well. And reflections are really common if you have an inclusion towards one of the inner surfaces. So it's reflecting all the way around here and reflecting all the way around there. Look at that. This stone looks much more included than it is. And then after laser drilling, here you can see we've increased the brightness of the stone. It's still included heavily, but you've got your lighter inclusion there. All the reflections have lightened up here and down here as well. So making it look better, especially if it wasn't blown up so large, you can imagine that if it was a small 50 pointer, it would look a lot better to the unaided eye. So to talk about the laser drilling process in a bit more detail and to give you some more facts, uh, when we laser drill a diamond, ideally we drill from the crown straight on top of the inclusion. The reason for that is then even though we're adding an inclusion by drilling into the stone, we're adding in a channel, we're not seeing this from its face up position, which is the position that diamonds are set within jewellery. So here's our before diagram and then here it is drawing so that laser drill hole is right on top of it. So visually not adding anything or very little from the very important face up position. And then here it is after. So just a lightened inclusion, no extra drill channels that you can see if you drill from directly above the inclusion. So this is certainly the preference. Uh, there are occasions where you'll drill it from other directions, but I'll talk about that separately. Whenever we drill an inclusion, you need to drill 90 degrees to the surface. because you can imagine that if you were at any other angle, you would then get refraction of the laser. So the laser would not go the path that you wanted it to. And also the inclusion might not be where you think it is due to refraction. So you need to drill 90 degrees perpendicular to the surface. When it comes to cost, uh, cost has really varied over the years. The most recent figures that I've been able to obtain, which is still about five or six years old, um, but is that for um, the price in American dollars is 15 to 25 dollars per carat to laser drill. This is location dependent, so this is um, not in New York. New York, I know there is two or three times more than this, so this is often overseas at some treatment plants. Um, 
And I know originally when this treatment first came out in the 1970s, you could be looking at maybe $150 a carat to treat a stone. But generally speaking, it's not a large price to pay to make a diamond look more visually appealing and be able to sell it as opposing to be stuck with it in your stock. You'd also need to take into consideration postage and insurance, mind you. Uh, in regards to how common this is, at one point it was very common when it first came out. Uh, also, when it first came out for the first 30 years, so for, from 1970 to the year 2000, so for 30 years, it was classed as a non-disclosable treatment. And some, um, like the Federal Trade Commission in the US, uh, said that this wasn't a diamond treatment at all, it was just an extension of the cutting and polishing of diamond. So uh, at that time where disclosure wasn't required for to give the consumer, it became really popular in regards to um, its prevalence. So at that point they were more common, but I've spoken to a couple of labs or people that work in labs and they're saying they're seeing a real decline within the prevalence of these treatments within diamonds. But out of all the diamonds that are treated, it's most common on smaller stones, so melee diamonds, those that are 20 points and under, or a fifth of a carat and under. But they can be performed on a number of different sizes. So the smallest can go down to just five points. This is a diamond that's just over two millimeters in diameter. So very, very small. And it can be performed on larger diamonds as well. So a diamond over 13 carats has been reported to be laser drilled also. And someone in the previous session mentioned that she saw an, uh, an old European cut in an antique ring that had been laser drilled. And that was a four carat diamond as well. So you have to check everything is what I'm saying. It can be done on a wide range of diamonds. And most commonly, if we have a laser drilled stone, it's on a stone with a lower clarity, so SI2 and below. But there are examples of SI1 diamonds that have been clarity graded, and even VS2 diamonds that have been um, VS2 diamonds that have been laser drilled. Uh, this might be for a larger stone, so when you clarity grade, the size of the inclusions is proportionate to the stone. So let's say maybe it was a one, one and a half carat stone, and often just on the edge, and they might use laser drilling to try and improve the clarity grade rather than cut the stone, especially if it's at a critical weight. So if you had a stone just over one carat and you have an inclusion just on the edge, you don't wanna recut it and risk going below a carat, that would really lose money but maybe laser drilling would help make the diamond look even better and up a clarity grade. But it's most common on uh, stones with worse clarity. Uh, just to let you know, multiple treatments within one stone, so multiple drill holes are very common. Uh, this doesn't decrease the price any more than it would have been anyway. So these stones often do have multiple inclusions, typically quite large inclusions as well. And one inclusion can have multiple drill holes leading to it, or it can be done on lots of separate inclusions within the stone. This doesn't have any more of a negative effect on price than it would have, and it has no effect on durability for the stone either, because these drill holes are absolutely tiny and they don't go, they don't take advantage of any weak planes within the stone. They're just burnt straight through it. So these um, are also very common. You can see in this photograph, lots of drill holes for lots of inclusions. When it comes to different directions of laser drilling, it is possible to laser drill a diamond from the pavilion. Uh, this will be done if an inclusion is further down into the stone. So rather than burning from the top, which will take a long time, and also the width of the laser limits its depth somewhat. So on those occasions, if they want to treat an inclusion deep within the stone, they will drill it from another direction. However, when you do have a drill hole that's touching the pavilion facet, this is very likely to reflect around the stone. So here's a picture just showing you that. So we've got our original inclusion. I think it's this here, just um, coming from this pavilion facet into this inclusion 
just here, but you can see in the crown facets, it's reflecting around. And you can see the laser drill channel here, 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 and just reflecting all around those crown facets. So that's the one problem from laser drilling from the pavilion. Also in this stone, you can see it's all reflecting on the other side as well. So making this one inclusion actually very large from the face up view. When it comes to identifying the laser drilling, it all comes down to the features of the laser drill hole and also the associated treated inclusion. So the first thing that we can look for is the entry point. Well, one of the things we can look for is the entry point. So where the laser has entered the stone from the surface. So this is best seen in reflected light. So here we're looking at the table facet just tilted in the right way so that light can reflect off the surface. And you will see, once you've cleaned the surface thoroughly, if you still see these very round, dark holes, that's where the light is not reflecting. And the reason for that on this occasion is because the light is falling down the drill hole. You can actually see the light running down that channel behind the stone there. So this is one of your identification features of laser drilling. If we have a look at another picture, this is on the pavilion. But again, we're using reflected light to illuminate those facets. And you can see these dark circular inclusions where the laser drill hole has entered into the stone. And in this picture, you can also see the colorless, well, you can't see they're colorless at this point, but you can see the form of the inclusions that have been treated below them. So that's something else you would certainly be able to see in dark field illumination. So you can switch your light source and have a look for that feature as well. Another key feature is the drill channel itself. So this is that pathway that has been burnt through into the diamond. Now, where you will look for this does depend on whether it's been drilled through the crown or drilled through the pavilion. If the stone has been drilled through the crown, you will see this feature from the back of the stone. So best looking from the side back of the pavilion. So if here's the pavilion, you want to look at this kind of angle. And you will see if you look up into the stone that from the table, or sometimes it appears like it's coming from the girdle, you have this laser drill channel coming down. And then you will see also an associated white inclusion dangling off the end of it. Now, uh, with all observation of any gemstone, you always need to look at the gem from many, many directions. One direction just doesn't cut it because you might miss an inclusion if it's on the other side or if there's other inclusions in the way. So the best way to have a look at this inclusion if the stone is loose is to hold the stone table to coule and to rotate the stone so that you certainly look at all angles around the stone. And if it's set, if it's claw set, you can also have a look through any of those open spaces in the setting to have a look for this feature. If the stone has been drilled from the pavilion, then we actually see this drilled channel through the crown view. So drilled from the pavilion, we see it through the crown, just like it did before. And you might see those reflections running around as well. So um, this is where you'll see the channel if it's drilled from the pavilion. And if you also want to check for that drill hole, so the entry point, you'd have to have a look on the pavilion facet. And lastly, the, what should be associated with all laser drilling is a white or transparent inclusion, because to be treated, we have to have something to show for it. So on the end of every drill channel, there will be an associated treated inclusion, which can appear transparent and completely colorless, or it might appear whitish and slightly translucent or even opaque. So here's just to show you a diamond that I saw not too long ago. So it came into um, the lab and I had a look with my loop and straight away it was somewhat included. So you should always check a diamond from all directions. Tilting it so that it's under reflected light straight away, I could see that we had some entry points here. There were some interesting shapes and also you can see that they've been subsequently polished because they show drag lines on them. But straight away you need further investigation and there was the stone from the side so this had been uh, treated multiple times with laser drilling 
So there you can see all the drill holes running down with their associated white inclusions dangling off the end. So how does this affect the grading of the stone? Well, when we are grading diamonds, we always grade a diamond and call the grade from the face up position. We look around the whole stone to make sure that we've seen all the features we need to see, but ultimately the grade is decided from this face up position, the crown view. And when we're diamond grading, we take five things into consideration. We consider the size of the inclusions and their position, how many inclusions there are, so the number, as well as their nature and their brightness. Now, with this treatment, we haven't changed the size of the inclusion or the position or the number. If anything, we might have added one with the laser drill channel. We haven't changed the nature really, we kind of have, because we've changed it from a mineral inclusion to an empty void. But the main thing that we've changed with this treatment is the brightness. And when we talk about the brightness of an inclusion, we mean how much it stands out from its background. So how much it's contrasting, whether it's high relief or low relief. So the inclusions before they've been laser drilled, if we look at this picture again, we can see this is in high relief, it's standing out from the light background. And then after we've changed how obvious that inclusion is by making it low relief. In regards to grading, we grade to the best that we can just from seeing what we see it considering these five factors. This might change the clarity grade and make it better. If there's big channels coming in, it might make it worse from the face up view. But typically, it actually doesn't change the clarity grade most of the time because we're not changing the size, position or number of the inclusions. So, for example, this diamond, it was an I1, maybe an I2 before treatment, and it's an I1, I2 after treatment. When it comes to some diamonds, though, we can increase the clarity of a diamond if the brightness was really affecting its grade. For example, this diamond, which you saw first of all, this is an I2, definitely with this inclusion, it draws the eye and it's so big. But afterwards, it would be classed as an I1 inclusion because it really, even though it's very large and you could see that with the unaided eye, it wouldn't be as bad with the unaided eye and it's not affecting the durability negatively or the beauty too badly either. When it comes to disclosure of this treatment, I've mentioned already that for a period of time, uh, this treatment didn't require disclosure. Uh, that changed in the year 2000. So that was actually consumer driven. So uh, a consumer had a very bad experience where she bought a diamond, found out later it was laser drilled and was not happy and started um, a crusade, as it was described, to you know, really complain to the associations and say, well, this isn't right. So ever since the year 2000, this is a fully disclosable treatment by law, not just your own moral co code. So it must be disclosed. But uh, in regards to how stable this treatment is, laser drilling is permanent, it's completely stable, it requires no special care instructions, and it can be colour and clarity graded by labs because the laser drill hole is there to stay, it's not affecting the colour or the clarity anymore once it's existing in the stone. So how it's disclosed, uh, this is an example on the GIA reports, this will be listed and plotted on the plot diagram within reports. So it's always listed first if it's present within the stone, so laser drill hole, and then it will be plotted on the diagram relevant to its position on the diamond as well. Uh, on a GIA report, this is the only place that it is, so always make sure that you check the plot diagram and the list of the inclusions when you're looking at your diamonds to check if it's been treated. So this treatment must be disclosed on all lab reports and also at point of sale. So this should be on the receipt, um, on the label for the stone. And it is advisable to uh, verbally uh, say this to your consumer as well. And just to let you know, GIA, when this treatment first came out, I believe they first of all didn't grade these stones for the first couple of years. But then when they did, they've always listed it on their list of inclusions on their plot diagram. So even if you have an older certificate, this you know, will still be relevant today. It is still listed. 
In regards to other treatments that might be put together with laser drilling, so laser drilling and filling, there is a common thought that I've read online that a lot of these laser drill holes are filled. And I've read that they might be filled with a synthetic wax or a resin or um, lead glass filling. Now, although this is possible, and I've seen some that have been lead glass filled, this doesn't have much benefit to the stone. It doesn't make the stone look any better. In fact, if it's lead glass filled, it gives additional color flashes, making the inclusion or the treatment even easier to identify. And uh, also they say that they might plug it with wax to stop any dirt from going inside the drill hole. But I must say, I've never I've only seen one or two examples. I've never seen any wax or resin put in. And even for all the ones that I've seen that haven't been filled, which is the majority, uh, you never see any dirt really getting trapped inside the drill hole. The drill hole's so tiny. And even if there was any dirt trapped in there, it wouldn't really affect the clarity of the stone. The clarity of the stone is already pretty, you know, often low, and it's right on top of an inclusion anyway. And um, it's just so small, I've never seen dirt go in there, but there we go. So gemstones with laser drill holes can be filled, but not often because there is little visual benefit from it. And also, as soon as you put a filling within a stone, this is classed as a separate additional treatment and requires its own special disclosure and special care instructions because any filling is not permanent or major well in diamonds no filling is permanent so therefore you can't clean it the same way in steam cleaners and ultrasonic cleaners so it requires its own disclosure and it can't be GIA won't grade them either they won't give reports so therefore laser drilling with filling of the laser drill channels is not common although it's often said that it's common it's not so that's pretty much it for laser drilling, but just to talk to you about one thing that it could be confused with on first glance, uh, the la laser drill channels can be confused with natural etch channels. Now, um, if you investigate further into the stone, you'll quickly realize your mistake, but it is a stone that I saw not too long ago. So uh, this diamond uh, came onto my desk and straight away I looked at it with my 10 times loop and I thought, oh, laser drilled, channels everywhere and it's been drilled from the pavilion, which is why I can see all these drill channels coming in. And as soon as I put it under a microscope, I realised that I must be wrong because it didn't have any of the other features that laser drilling has. For example, there were no inclusions at the end of these pathways. So therefore, these needle-like inclusions were going nowhere. So what was going on in the stone? So I looked a bit closer, and here, this is where the um, inclusion was meeting the surface of the stone. And you can see that instead of it being round, like a drill hole would be, it was more angular. And in this case, it was rectangular. And it also had um, growth markings along the length of the inclusion as well. And that's when I realized that these were etch channels inside the stone and not laser drill holes. So on first glance, you might think, oh, laser drilled, but then closer inspection, you'll realize your mistake with the angular entry points and um, the shape of the inclusion and any texture on the inclusion as well and the lack of a white inclusion at the end. Now let's move on to the other type of laser drilling. So KM laser drilling, this came around in 2000. So just as the disclosure changed for the other treatment, so all KM laser treatment is also requires full disclosure. And KM stands for Kidua Mehad, meaning special drill in Hebrew. And this treatment was first developed and is mainly performed in Israel. This is also known as internal laser drilling or IDL by a number of associations, including GEMA. So they'll, beg your pardon, including GIA. So on the GIA lab reports, you'll see it being referred to as internal laser drilling. But the process is very similar. We're, in a way, we're targeting the same type of inclusion, which is a dark 
mineral inclusion and our aim is to lighten it and we're going to do this with the use of a laser but rather than use the laser to drill to the inclusion we use the laser to create a series of fractures within the stone and these extend all the way to the surface and once they reach the surface we can introduce acids to bleach and dissolve out that inclusion so similar but a different way of creating that entry path from the surface to the inclusion so just to show you a diagram step by step uh, example of how this happens here again is our dark mineral inclusion for this treatment it is preferable to have inclusions that are closer towards the surface of the stone because where we're extending fractures and creating fractures in the stone we don't want to treat this too deep within the stone because we are utilizing the weaker planes within a diamond so we don't want to go too deep because that is or can be a serious durability issue so uh, this again is done with lasers so one or more so sometimes three pulsed lasers are focused onto the inclusion or nearby the inclusion to cause a stress fracture and when this stress fracture is created they will then reposition the lasers again and again so that they create a series of fractures that extend out from the inclusion all the way to the surface of the stone so this like i said can utilize either the cleavage directions of the stone or just create fractures within the stone and it's normally this step-by-step -step, almost zigzag appearance to it once it reaches the surface the surface reaching fractures are really fine but that is still our entry point into the stone the diamond can be deep boiled again in acid and this will bleach or dissolve away the inclusion leaving again a less noticeable inclusion and a stone which is more appealing on the commercial market now this treatment has a much more natural appearance than laser drilling because laser drilling, our features are quite obvious, really, this very unnatural looking drill channel that's running into the stone and meeting the inclusion. When we do a series of fractures, fractures can exist in natural diamonds, and it can look a lot more natural within this treatment as well. So it is harder to identify. But it also does add, and this is always worth noting, um, noting that it does also lower the durability of the diamond somewhat because as soon as you have any surface reaching chip fracture cleavage crack that is a vulnerable area because if that suffers a blow it's more likely to extend further into the stone so here is a picture uh, by gia they did some studies where they had diamonds with inclusions that they photographed and graded beforehand and then sent them off to get km laser drilled so here's our inclusion before our dark inclusion which already had some fractures attached to it and afterwards here's the inclusion new fractures are in the stone which are actually extending towards us in this picture so we can't see the length of them because they're coming at us but you can see straight away that this is something that might not bat an eyelid when you first see it however it is actually a treated inclusion so when we talk about identification it can be harder but we do have a surface reaching fracture within the stone and nearby and attached to it somehow through a series of fractures it will be associated with a white or colorless inclusion so these two features together always require some extra examination i would suggest with a microscope because all the ones that i've seen although the inclusion is visible with a 10 times loop it's not very clear you need 40 50 60 times magnification to clearly see this fracture plane and to see if it looks like km laser drilling when looking really closely at km laser drilling we do have a couple of patterns within the fracture that can help us identify it and this is either zigzag like fractures which are really typical um, here they are so you can see just here here's our colorless inclusion and then we have the surface of the diamond just here and we've got this zigzag like pattern 
extending within the network of fractures. The fractures themselves, they're transparent, but can you see they do extend all the way over here as well? And this black area, I've asked a couple of people, they weren't sure exactly what it is, but I've been told it's an area of graphite that's been burnt by the laser that may have just not been able to be bleached out. And that there is your key feature, this zigzag fracture, dark fracture, key feature in your KM laser drilling. Uh, if it's not a zigzag, because they can vary in appearance, especially because the treaters try and vary to make it look even more and more natural, uh, there can also be wormhole-like pathways. I've got a photograph coming up. Let's have a look at a few more zigzags. So here, KM laser drilling, our colorless inclusion, reaching the surface by a network of these fractures, and then again, our dark zigzag-like inclusion. Here's another one, colorless inclusion, surface of the stone, and then our zigzag-like pattern. Here are the wormhole-like patterns. So again, we have this colorless inclusion, it's reaching the surface. Can you see this transparent fracture running just here? And then just within it, you've got these white wormhole-like inclusions. And this is your pathway that's been burnt by your laser. Sometimes they can be really squiggly, like this one. Here we go. <laughs> um, I was about to describe it to you. No need. Uh, so here again, you've got your crystal inclusion that's been bleached. Some associated fractures, maybe from it being heated up by the lasers, but then our transparent fracture running here to the surface and these worm-like inclusions running down. So very unnatural. And that's what you can expect for your KM laser drilling. These laser drill channels, that's what caused the fracture. Okay, so it heated up. You can sometimes see them really squiggly and circular. They've almost made a dot within it because it's not the acid that goes in doesn't necessarily follow that worm-like structure. It's flowing within the fracture it's created. So as long as the laser can create that fracture, you've got your entry path to treat the inclusion. And just a couple more for you. So here, your inclusion with fractures. This one has a lot of fractures on, which may have been caused by the KM laser drill. Your worm-like structure, in this instance, it's dark. And then that fracture extending all around it as well, which was our pathway for our acid. And one more, this is a good one because it shows you how the zigzag can be less zigzag-like. But here you've got your pathway which as you can see it does look like it's stopped and started and it is angular throughout the stone leading towards the surface with lots of associated fractures coming off of it so that's our pathway so a few more pieces of information for you so this treatment is relatively rare nowadays it was um early 2000s and all the way apparently until maybe about three or four years ago, it was quite common. Um, so some labs, well, one lab that I spoke to in Israel, they said that 20% of their clarity treated stones were KM. That could be to do with maybe the fact that this treatment was created and is commonly done within Israel. Uh, I read a couple of other reports from other labs saying it was maybe around 5% even less. Um, but so they're still relatively rare nowadays. and all of these clarity treatments are going down in popularity or in prevalence rather. Uh, one theory I can think of is that it might be due to the fact that synthetic diamonds are becoming so popular, particularly in Nelly diamonds. So this is a cheaper way of creating very, very uh, clear, good clarity diamonds. So maybe that's why these treatments are declining in regards to how common they are. Um, but when it comes to looking for KM laser drillings, as soon as you see an inclusion that's very close to the surface, it's always best to have a closer look. I do recommend with a microscope, really whack up that uh, magnification so that you can see whether it is indeed touching the surface, whether it has linked to a colorless inclusion that may have been treated, and then have a look at that pathway which connects those two parts, the inclusion and the surface, to see whether it has got that typical zigzag or worm-like pattern. Where this has created a surface-reaching fracture, surface-reaching fractures can be filled with a 
high um, high lead content glass to make the fractures less noticeable. However, typically the fractures themselves aren't that noticeable anyway within this treatment. As you saw, they looked really thin and transparent. Um, but if it has been treated, you should always check that it hasn't been filled because as we discussed earlier with filling the drill holes, this will require extra disclosure in regards to the fact that it's filled as well as KM laser drilled and it will require special care instructions and labs will not give certificates or well, certainly GIA won't because they don't grade fracture filled stones. So how does this affect grading? So here are our five factors again for how diamonds are graded, size, position, number. Uh, one thing that we've greatly affected with KM laser drilling is the nature of the inclusion because we did have a uh, mineral inclusion, now we have a void, but we've also introduced fractures and surface reaching cleavages into the stone as well. And that is a durability issue that is often negatively viewed upon in grading, the surface reaching breaks. So that's not so good. So this will affect the clarity grade depending on the stone exactly. And also we've affected the brightness of the inclusion as well. So again, we don't know what the diamonds look like beforehand, but we drill them, graded on their face up position, um, sorry, their face up appearance based on these five factors. The surface reach inclusion isn't going to be in favor of the clarity grade. So this treatment can either keep the clarity grade the same if it hasn't affected the clarity too much from this top. It can maybe increase the clarity if the fracture hasn't extended too far out or on a couple of occasions, this treatment can actually decrease the clarity grade. And uh, we know this because GIA, from their experiment of taking photographs before and after, they graded their stones. And a lot of the stones in this experiment did lose a clarity grade due to the fact that we've extended outwards a fracture, which not only enlarges the size of the inclusion, which can lower the grade, but also we're affecting the nature of the inclusion as well by having those fractures there. In regards to disclosure, it's very much similar to the other traditional laser drilling treatment. So it is permanent and stable. Uh, the one caveat that you might have to mention is that that surface reaching inclusion can extend during knocks, so you have introduced a durability issue, but it can be cleaned and treated otherwise all in the same ways as non-treated diamonds. And the diamond can be color and clarity graded and disclosure is required on all lab reports and at point of sale, it is recommended to also do so verbally. In regards to how this is disclosed by GIA, this will not be put on the plot diagram like the other laser drilling, but for KM laser drilling or internal laser drilling, this will be written in the comments. And the comment that will be present is internal laser drilling not shown. This means that laser drilling is present within the diamond, it's just not on the plot diagram. Okay, so this is the disclosure on the report. When it comes to different features, that KM laser drilling can be confused with. Uh, this will, can be confused with laser manufacturing remnants or LMRs. And where lasers are now utilized often and have been since the 70s, have been utilized within the cutting of diamonds, sometimes we can have remnants of this laser cutting within the stone. Now, how GIA define what is a laser manufacturing remnant and what has been KM laser drilled is basically viewing the inclusion and seeing whether it has led to an inclusion that's been treated. So for example, this inclusion here, we can see that squiggly line running through. So it has had a laser on this part of the diamond and it's got these associated fractures, but it's not associated to a colorless inclusion. So in this case, it's not classed as a treatment because it hasn't treated anything and it will be graded accordingly. So having a laser remnant is a clarity feature. So it will be graded based on size, position, how noticeable it is and so on. So that's it for the main part of the lecture. 
So we've covered our laser drilling. So uh, just to recap a couple of those key points. So laser drilling, also sometimes referred to as traditional laser drilling to help differentiate it. Uh, this started commercially, it came onto the market in 1970. And this involves treating dark inclusions. We burn a hole through the diamond to the inclusion so that we can bleach or dissolve the mineral inclusion within. This has a great impact on the visual impact of the inclusion, making it lower relief and less noticeable. But generally speaking, in regards to treatments, it's quite easily identifiable. We just have to be sure to check all angles of the stone. But we can look for the drill channel, as shown here, the entry point, which will be, of course, in the opposite direction to the drill channel you see, and there will always be an associated white or transparent inclusion. When it comes to KM laser drilling, so a similar treatment, again using lasers and treating dark inclusions. This came about in 2000. This is harder to identify as the inclusions created do appear more natural. And don't forget, they also can affect the durability of the diamond negatively. Uh, so to identify, we just need to use high magnification. So I do recommend a microscope for identifying this treatment under a lots of different light sources. So it is good to use um, just dispersed, dispersed, what am I saying? That's not the word I want, but to use um, dark field illumination as well as diffused background light source, that's it. So uh, do have a look, it can really show up this inclusion nice and clearly for you. But the main part is that you're looking for this zigzag or worm-like structures, which are going from an internal inclusion that's normally colorless or whitish, if the treatment was successful, to the surface of the stone. So you need these two linked together with the zigzag or worm-like structure. And finally, in regards to grading and disclosure, so clarity grading is performed like it is on all other diamonds from the face-up view. And uh, all laser drilling treatments will be disclosed on reports and should be disclosed at point of sale as well. And don't forget just to check for any fillings as this will require additional disclosure and special care instructions also. But that's it. Thank you so much for listening. Let's launch a quiz. So I've just got a quiz here. It's just four simple multiple choice questions that I've just launched on your screens now. So I'll also read them out to you. Here we go. So question number one, select the feature or features that help you identify a laser drilled diamond. So I am referring to the traditional laser drilled uh, treatment here. So options, black inclusions, a drill channel or an angular hole on the surface. So select the feature or features that are correct. Question two, select the feature or features that help you identify a KM laser drilled diamond. So choices, angular hole on the surface, surface reaching fracture, wormhole etch channels, zigzag fracture pattern. So again, select all the ones that are relevant. And then question three, which treatment or treatments require full disclosure? So you just need to select all that apply. Uh, laser drilling only. KM laser drilling only, or both laser drilling and KM laser drilling. And the last question, almost all laser drilled diamonds are also filled, true or false? Oh, I've just been complimented on my pronunciation of Kidua Meyuhad. Thank you, Guy. He's the one that taught me, <laughs> so thank you. I'll just give you a couple of minutes to answer that quiz. I see that over half of you have submitted. Oh, someone's asked me a question that I'll quickly answer. And the question is, how long does it take on average to complete a laser drilling on a stone? Are they sometimes done by computer aided programs? Great question. I'm sure the computer does assist somehow. I'm not quite sure how. Um, but I have read that to go about a millimetre and a half with traditional laser drilling into the stone, I've heard that this can take 
um, approximately 30 to 45 minutes. I did contact a laser company who got back to me really quickly, they were so helpful, called SPI Lasers, and they told me that it would probably take even less time than that to go a millimeter and a half. And depth, they said, is only limited by the width of the laser, so you can go deeper if you have a wider laser, which of course for diamonds isn't necessarily what we want to do, because we don't want a too big a entry hole. So in a way, our depth is kind of limited. But thank you for the question. I, th I don't know about the computer-aided program part, though. There we go. Okay, let's finish off this quiz, shall we? So I'm going to close that down now. Ah, oh, this happened last time. Okay, most of you have got all the questions and answers right. The second question, I think there was a program error there because you couldn't select all the ones that were relevant. I'm sorry. But question one, let's go through the answers. Question one, 86% uh, of you got this right. Question one, select the feature that help you identify a laser drill diamond. The correct answer is a drill channel. Black inclusions shouldn't be there if it's successfully been laser drilled. Um, and an angular hole in the surface, it would be round if it was laser drilled. That was me trying to trick you. Well done for not falling for it. Question number two, select the features that help you identify a KM laser drilled diamond. The correct answers were surface reaching fractures, although these can be really fine on these treated stones, wormhole etch pits, etch pits, wormhole etch channels, and also zigzag fracture patterns. Question number three, which treatment requires full disclosure? And the answer is both of them, so laser drilling and KM laser drilling. All treatments on diamonds require disclosure, actually. So very good. And then the last question, almost all laser drilled diamonds are also filled. False, that's not true. Although a lot of websites say that they're filled, uh, that's not the case. It doesn't make sense because then you need the extra disclosure for filling and it doesn't even look that good and so on and so forth. So I'm gonna close the quiz now, hopefully. And I just need to share my screen with you again. Hopefully that's back on for you. And now it's time for questions. So do feel free to ask any questions that you have into the comments and I will try my very best to answer them. As always, if I can't get to your, if I don't get to your question in this part of the session, I'll hang out for a couple of minutes and try and answer as many as I can. Okay, so straight away, I've got a question uh, from Josh asking, what's the difference between an etch channel and a drill channel? So an etch channel, this is a natural feature within diamonds. You don't see them very commonly. Now, that caught me off guard when I saw the picture that I showed you. Um, and what this can happen, it's the same um, lattice fault that causes trigons within diamonds or on the surfaces of rough diamonds. So trigons are there if there is a slight defect within the crystal structure, they actually will go on these defect planes. And when a diamond is tumbling up, upwards in the volcano, it can get attacked with on these weaker defects. And this is where etch channels can be created by these corrosive gases and uh, magmas and things. So that's what etch channels are. They are a natural feature. You don't see them very commonly, uh, but they do then have this structure structural appearance they're normally angular um, in cross section and they will have um, almost like surface features so striations along them so that's what an etch channel is a drill channel is something that has been put in by man uh, with the use of a laser and we've burnt essentially into the stone and this in order to treat an inclusion so that's the different josh i hope uh, that that helped out thank you so much for your question uh, someone's asked me, Lucy, hello, uh, laser drilling is most common in colourless diamonds. How often does it happen in coloured diamonds and how much harder is it to identify? Uh, great question. So uh, I'll start off by saying it can happen in fancy coloured diamonds. Fancy coloured diamonds have been laser drilled. However, it's not that common. For the reason, a couple of reasons, fancy colored diamonds are really rare and so much of their value relies on their color and the rarity and attractiveness of that color. That really the criteria for grading a colored diamonds is very different from colorless diamonds. And 
the clarity grade of diamonds holds a lot less importance. So lower clarity grades are more happily accepted within colored diamonds because it's more about the rarity of the color. So for that reason, they're not treated as often, but they can happen. I've never seen one myself in real life and I've worked quite a bit with colored diamonds. Um, so I know it can happen in regards to how much harder it is to identify, you'll still have those key features. I sh shouldn't think it would be much harder at all because you're still looking for a transparent inclusion within the stone from the side. You will still see this channel, this unnatural looking channel running from the surface to the inclusion and then clean the surface, put it under reflected light. You'll see an entry point. So it shouldn't be much harder. But I haven't seen one myself, but that's me surmising, guessing. Thank you for your question. And do, 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 do. yes, someone's saying that they've read that they can fill the drill hole. Yes, but they don't really because they didn't do it very often. I've seen only a couple and actually they were subsequently deep boiled to try and remove the filling because GIA will not issue reports on any filled stones. Um, they will then have to be described and disclosed as laser drilled and filled and will require special care instructions and visually they don't look much better than if they hadn't been filled so there's no not too much benefit so even though it's all over the internet saying that they have they're often filled it's not really the case in real life also on the line there's you know a lot of um websites still say that it's not a treatment and doesn't require disclosure so on this particular issue don't listen to the website so much unless it is an official association talking or someone respected within the gemological community. And then uh, I'll do one more question here. Someone's asked, Omer, hello, asked, how does this affect the physical properties of the diamonds? It depends, it doesn't really. For traditional laser drilling, it's still just as hard. Optically, it performs the same, it's just as tough. It hasn't added any durability issues that wouldn't have been there anyway. So the stone's heavily fractured. That's the fractures causing the problem. Um, KM laser drilling, that does give a durability issue in regards to toughness where there is a fracture. You have to be careful with that surface reaching fracture as you need to be on all surface reaching fractures for diamonds. Uh, but otherwise that's it, no other properties are affected. The stone may show more brilliance because you know light can then travel through the inclusion, but otherwise, you know, that's it. Okay, thank you. I'm going to pause the questions there for now. If you have any further questions for me, if I couldn't answer your questions during the lecture, contact me directly, julia at juryadvisor.com. Send me a Facebook message or comment on my page, start a group conversation, or on Instagram as well. Gemma, also follow them because they put it on their stories, Gemma of GB, and also we put it, um, everything on LinkedIn as well. Otherwise, that is it from me today. Uh, so thank you so much for joining this session. I do hope to see you next time and have a great rest of your Wednesday. Thank you. Take care.